wealth beyond money. How to build a business that aligns with your passion and makes you rich. Written by Ronnie Rowland. Published by Growth Literacy Lounge. Introduction. What if wealth isn't just about money? Sure, financial success matters. We all want to earn more, live better, and create something lasting. But here's the truth. Real wealth goes far beyond what's in your bank account. Real wealth is about living life on your terms, building something that excites and fulfills you, and aligning your business with your true passions. The question is, how do you achieve that? This book is your roadmap. It's about showing you that it's possible. Yes, you can build a business that not only makes you rich, but also aligns with what matters most to you. You don't have to sacrifice your joy, purpose, or freedom for financial gain. You can have all three. This is wealth beyond money. Too many entrepreneurs spend their lives in a relentless chase for more money. But what happens when you finally get it? Does the stress disappear? Do you suddenly feel fulfilled? Or are you left asking yourself, is this all there is? If you're reading this, you already know the answer. The pursuit of financial wealth without purpose leads to burnout, dissatisfaction, and sometimes even a sense of failure despite outward success. That's because the traditional view of wealth, endless hustle for more money, misses the point. True wealth is found when your business reflects your passion, empowers your life, and gives you freedom. What if you could design a business that feels as good as it performs? In Wealth Beyond Money, you'll learn how to build a business that not only thrives financially, but also fulfills your personal goals and dreams. I'm going to show you how to align your passions and strengths with a profitable business model so that each day you feel energized by the work you're doing, not drained by it. This isn't about making money for the sake of it. It's about designing a business that supports your life, not the other way around. Whether you're just starting your entrepreneurial journey or you've already experienced some success but feel like something's missing, this book will give you the tools and insights to build a business and a life rooted in purpose, freedom, and sustainable wealth. Throughout this book, you'll discover strategies, mindset shifts, and practical advice that will guide you toward becoming a wealthy entrepreneur, in every sense of the word. Imagine this, a business that doesn't just make money but also makes you feel alive. A business that gives you time for what truly matters. A business that not only supports your financial goals but also allows you to wake up each day excited for the work ahead. This book isn't promising a get-rich-quick scheme or overnight success. Instead, it offers something far more valuable, a path to build a business aligned with your deepest passions and designed for long-term wealth and fulfillment. By the end of this journey, you'll have the tools to not just make more money, but to live a richer, more meaningful life. We've noticed that 67% of you watching our videos haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Help us grow by hitting the subscribe button and giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you for inspiring us to keep creating content for you. I would love to hear your thoughts. How did this book resonate with you, and what insights or questions did it inspire? Chapter 1. Redefining Wealth The Old Paradigm of Wealth When most people think about wealth, the first image that comes to mind is stacks of cash, luxury cars, and exotic vacations. It's the picture we've been sold by society, wealth equals material abundance. But I'm here to tell you that this version of wealth is just scratching the surface. If you're only chasing money, you'll find yourself stuck in a never-ending race, one where you're constantly striving, but never truly satisfied. Wealth, real wealth, isn't just about money. It's about freedom. It's about living a life that aligns with your deepest passions, one that empowers you to spend your time doing what you love, with the people you care about, while creating a lasting impact on the world around you. This book isn't about helping you make a quick buck or amass a fortune you can't even enjoy. It's about redefining wealth so you can live a life of purpose, fulfillment, and yes, financial freedom. But the latter is a byproduct of building a business that truly reflects who you are. What is true wealth? True wealth isn't a number in your bank account, it's the feeling you get when you wake up in the morning, excited for the day ahead. It's the peace of mind that comes from knowing your business isn't just profitable, but sustainable, built on something you genuinely care about. It's also about freedom. Freedom to control your time, to choose how and where you work, and to build something that outlives you, a legacy that impacts not only your life but the lives of others. You might be thinking, I just need to make money first, then I'll worry about freedom and fulfillment, but this is exactly the mindset we need to change. 
Real wealth comes when you build a business that is rooted in passion and values from the start. It's the only way to sustain both financial success and personal fulfillment in the long run. Let's take a moment and think about this. What would your life look like if your business didn't drain you, but instead filled you up? Imagine waking up every day excited about the work you do, because it's aligned with your strengths and passions. That is the core of entrepreneurial wealth. The intersection of passion, strength, and profit. Building wealth starts by aligning your passion with your strengths in a way that also creates profit. It's like finding the sweet spot where what you love to do meets what you're exceptionally good at and where there's a market demand. I want you to ask yourself these three questions. 1. What am I passionate about? 2. What am I naturally good at? 3. What does the world need, and how can I deliver it? The intersection of these three is where your entrepreneurial wealth-building journey begins. One of the biggest mistakes new entrepreneurs make is starting a business based purely on what they think will make money. They see a trendy industry, jump in, and hustle hard to get results. But without a deeper alignment to passion and personal strengths, that hustle quickly leads to burnout. To avoid this, you need to think holistically about what you're bringing to the table. You aren't just selling a product or a service, you're crafting a business that's an extension of your values, your passion, and your unique abilities. Most entrepreneurs start by thinking about short-term gains. How can I make money as fast as possible, but I want you to shift your thinking to the long term? What legacy do you want to create with your business? What impact do you want to leave on the world? Building a business that generates wealth isn't just about quick wins. It's about creating something that will outlast you. Think about your business as your legacy. How will it continue to provide value long after you've moved on? By shifting to this mindset, you'll start making decisions that align with lasting success, not just immediate profit. So how do we redefine wealth for the modern entrepreneur? It's a blend of financial freedom, personal fulfillment, and impact. Financial freedom. Having the money to live your life on your terms, without being bound to a 9-to-5 or a business that feels like a job. Doing work that aligns with your passions and brings you joy. Creating something that not only benefits you but also leaves a positive mark on the world. When you achieve this balance, you're no longer just working for money. You're building a business that makes you truly wealthy, in every sense of the word. Now, let's put these concepts into action. Take some time to reflect and write down the following. 1. What does true wealth look like for you? Not just in financial terms, but in terms of freedom, fulfillment, and impact. 2. What are your passions, strengths, and how do they align with the business you want to build? 3. What legacy do you want to leave through your business? These reflections will serve as the foundation for everything you build from here on out. As we move through this book, we'll layer practical strategies on top of this new wealth-driven mindset. Chapter 2. Discovering Your Entrepreneurial Passion Passion as the Catalyst for Sustainable Wealth We've redefined wealth beyond mere financial success. Now it's time to talk about the fuel that will sustain your journey, passion. You see, passion isn't just a nice-to-have in business. It's what will carry you through the tough days, the setbacks, and the challenges that every entrepreneur inevitably faces. But here's the thing, passion alone isn't enough. While it's the spark that ignites your motivation, it needs to be paired with skill and market demand for it to truly lead to wealth. In this chapter we're going to identify what makes you come alive, what you're naturally good at, and how to turn that into a business that makes both you and your customers feel fulfilled. The Passion Misconception It's not just a hobby. One common misconception is that passion is the same thing as a hobby. But hobbies, while enjoyable, don't always translate into a business. The key is to find an intersection between what you're passionate about and what people are willing to pay for. This is where we start merging your passions with marketable opportunities. Ask yourself, what are the things that excite me and make me lose track of time, but also serve others in some way? Passion-driven businesses don't just bring personal joy, they solve problems and create value for others. Finding your entrepreneurial passion. Let's walk through a series of questions to help you uncover the passion that can drive your business. 1. What activities make you feel energized? Think about the tasks, activities, or hobbies that make you feel more alive, not drained. For example, if you feel excited when you're teaching others or solving problems, this could be a clue toward building a business that's centered on education or consulting. 2. 
What problems are you naturally drawn to solving? Entrepreneurs solve problems. What problems or challenges do you naturally gravitate toward? These are often the foundation of a strong business. 3. What's your unique perspective? Passion often comes from having a unique view of the world. What's your angle? Maybe you see opportunities in ways others don't. Your business idea could come from a fresh perspective on a familiar problem. Answering these questions will help you discover your passion, but remember that it needs to intersect with skills and market demand, something we'll address next. What are you naturally good at? Once you've identified what you're passionate about, it's time to examine your strengths. These are the natural abilities or learned skills that you excel in. When you align your business with both passion and strengths, you create a winning formula for success. Here's a key insight. Passion without skill is a hobby, but passion combined with skill becomes a business. Think about the compliments and feedback you receive from others. What do people often tell you you're great at? This can be a sign of where your strengths lie. Passion plus strengths plus market demand. Now that you've identified your passions and strengths, the final piece is understanding what the market needs and how your unique combination of passion and skills can meet those needs. This is where real entrepreneurial wealth begins to take shape. To build a profitable business, you must find the overlap between what you love passion, what you're good at strengths, what people are willing to pay for market demand. This intersection is what we call your entrepreneurial sweet spot. Mapping your entrepreneurial sweet spot. Take out a piece of paper and draw three overlapping circles, like a Venn diagram. Label them as follows. 1. Passion. Write down the activities, topics, or problems you're most passionate about. 2. Strengths. List the skills and talents you've developed over the years, both through formal education and life experience. 3. Market demand. Research and write down what people are currently paying for in your area of interest. Where these circles intersect is where you can build your business. This is your entrepreneurial sweet spot, the space where you can thrive both personally and financially. The myth of following your passion blindly. Here's an important reality check passion alone isn't enough to build a business. You can be incredibly passionate about something, but if there's no market for it, you won't be able to turn that passion into profit. This is why it's crucial to understand your market, who needs what you're offering and is willing to pay for it. You'll want to be strategic in how you approach this. If you're passionate about wellness, for example, don't just jump into the wellness industry because you love it. Research what's already working and where there are unmet needs. I want you to take some time to understand your target audience. What are their pain points? What problems are they facing that you can solve with your passion and skills? This will help you align your business idea with a profitable market. Building a business that aligns with your passion doesn't mean it will always feel effortless, but it should feel purposeful. When your work is meaningful and aligned with who you are, it becomes sustainable. You won't burn out because you're working from a place of joy and strength. Purposeful work gives you energy instead of depleting it. It's not about avoiding hard work, it's about creating work that feeds your soul while creating value for others. That's the real secret to wealth. To begin aligning your passion, strengths, and market demand, I want you to complete the following steps. 1. Passion Reflection Write down three things that make you feel most alive and fulfilled. How do they relate to solving problems or serving others? 2. Strengths Inventory List your top five strengths. These can be skills, talents, or qualities others have recognized in you. 3. Market Research Look at the industry you're interested in. What are the common pain points, and how can you provide a solution that's both aligned with your passions and backed by your strengths? By completing this exercise, you'll start to see where your passions and strengths intersect with market needs laying the foundation for a business that will not only make you money but also bring you joy and fulfillment. Chapter 3 Setting Financial Foundations for Growth Why Financial Foundations Matter It's easy to get excited about starting a business, envisioning the impact you'll make and the profits you'll generate. But there's a critical piece to this journey that can't be overlooked, financial stability. A business without strong financial foundations is like a house built on sand unstable and prone to collapse. This chapter is about helping you establish those financial foundations so that your business can grow sustainably. We're not just talking about making money, we're talking about building a business that provides you with financial freedom, security, and the ability to weather any storm. Before we dive into the nuts and bolts of financial planning, 
Let's address the mindset piece. Many entrepreneurs are passionate about their business ideas, but they shy away from the numbers. Why? Because money is often tied to fear, uncertainty, and even self-doubt. Shifting your relationship with money is crucial to becoming a wealthy entrepreneur. Instead of seeing money as something scarce, stressful, or overwhelming, start viewing it as a tool, a resource that can support your business and help you build the life you want. Think of it this way. Your business finances are the fuel that keeps your entrepreneurial engine running. If you're constantly running on empty or mismanaging your fuel, you won't get far. But with proper planning, budgeting, and smart investments, you can go the distance. Step 1. Create a budget that supports growth. The first practical step in establishing financial foundations is creating a budget. A well-structured budget helps you understand where your money is going and ensures that you're not overspending in the wrong areas. Here's a simple framework to follow. 1. Track your income and expenses. Start by documenting all sources of income whether it's from your business, side projects, or investments. Then, track your expenses. This includes both business-related costs, marketing, product development, and personal expenses, rent, food. 2. Separate personal and business finances. This is one of the most important rules in entrepreneurship. Keep your personal and business finances separate to avoid confusion and ensure you're accurately tracking the health of your business. 3. Identify areas for reinvestment. Once you have a clear picture of your income and expenses, identify areas where you can reinvest in your business. This could mean allocating more resources toward marketing, hiring help, or developing new products. Creating a budget isn't glamorous, but it's essential. The most successful entrepreneurs are the ones who understand their numbers inside and out. Don't let this step intimidate you. Use it to take control of your finances and set your business up for long-term success. Step 2. Understand and manage cash flow. Many entrepreneurs struggle with cash flow, the money that comes in and goes out of the business on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Positive cash flow means more money is coming in than going out, while negative cash flow is the opposite. This is one of the most important financial indicators of your business's health. While cash flow may sound like a technical topic, it's essential to see it as freedom. Managing your cash flow properly gives you peace of mind and the flexibility to make decisions that benefit both your business and your life. How to improve your cash flow. 1. Invoice promptly. If you're providing a service or product, make sure to invoice promptly and include clear payment terms. The faster you receive payments, the more stable your cash flow will be. 2. Cut unnecessary costs. Review your budget and identify areas where you can reduce expenses without compromising the quality of your business. For example, are there subscriptions or software you're paying for but no longer using? 3. Plan for slow periods. Every business has seasons, times when revenue may dip. Plan for these slow periods by setting aside a portion of your income during high revenue months to cover expenses when things slow down. Managing cash flow doesn't have to be complicated, but it does require consistency and attention. The more you pay attention to cash flow early on, the easier it will be to scale your business. Step 3. Build a financial cushion emergency fund. Every business, no matter how successful, will face unexpected challenges, whether it's a dip in sales, an economic downturn, or an unexpected expense. That's why building a financial cushion, also known as an emergency fund, is essential. Your financial cushion is the safety net that will keep your business afloat during tough times. It gives you the confidence to take calculated risks and the security to know that you won't be derailed by short-term setbacks. Many entrepreneurs skip this step because they're eager to reinvest all their profits back into the business. But wealth isn't built on constant reinvestment, it's built on smart financial planning. A financial cushion isn't just a safety net, it's an investment in your peace of mind. How to build your financial cushion 1. Set a savings goal. Aim to save at least 3 to 6 months worth of business expenses. This will cover you in case of emergencies or slow periods. 2. Automate your savings. Set up an automatic transfer to a separate savings account each month. This ensures you're consistently building your financial cushion without relying on willpower alone. 3. Avoid dipping into it. Treat your financial cushion like a last resort fund. Only use it for true emergencies, not for regular expenses or impulse decisions. Step 4. Plan for profitability, not just revenue. There's a big difference between revenue and profit. 
Many entrepreneurs focus on increasing their revenue the total amount of money coming into the business, but forget to pay attention to profit what's left after all expenses are paid. A business that brings in millions in revenue but has little to no profit isn't truly generating wealth. To build a business that makes you rich, focus on profitability, the money that stays in your pocket after all expenses are paid. How to increase profitability 1. Increase your margins. Look for ways to increase your profit margins. This could mean raising prices, reducing costs, or finding more efficient ways to deliver your product or service. 2. Focus on high profit activities. Not all business activities are created equal. Focus on the areas of your business that generate the most profit and minimize time spent on low profit activities. 3. Keep your fixed costs low. High fixed cost expenses that stay the same regardless of how much business you do can eat into your profits. Look for ways to keep these costs low, especially in the early stages of your business. Now it's time to put these financial principles into practice. Here's what I want you to do. 1. Create your business budget. Document your income, expenses, and areas for reinvestment. Keep this budget updated regularly to track your progress. 2. Monitor your cash flow. Start tracking your cash flow daily or weekly. Look for patterns and make adjustments as needed to ensure your business stays cash flow positive. 3. Build your financial cushion. Set a savings goal for your business and automate your savings plan. 4. Analyze your profitability. Review your revenue and expenses to understand your current profitability. Identify areas where you can increase profit margins and reduce unnecessary costs. These financial foundations will give you the stability and confidence to grow your business and your wealth sustainably. Chapter 4. Building Powerful Networks and Relationships The Myth of the Self-Made Entrepreneur Entrepreneurship is often portrayed as a solo journey, with the image of the self-made entrepreneur standing alone as the architect of their own success. But here's the reality. No one builds a thriving, wealthy business on their own. Behind every successful entrepreneur is a network of relationships, people who provide support, share resources, offer guidance, and open doors to new opportunities. Your ability to build meaningful relationships will directly impact your ability to create wealth. Let's challenge the lone wolf mentality. True wealth isn't created in isolation, it's built through collaboration and connection. The people you surround yourself with will either elevate you or hold you back. If you want to be a wealthy entrepreneur, you need to prioritize building a network of relationships that enrich your journey. Why Relationships Matter in Entrepreneurship Relationships are the currency of entrepreneurship. They open doors that money can't. From finding mentors to building partnerships, to gaining new clients, your network is one of the most valuable assets you can cultivate as an entrepreneur. Think of it this way. Every significant opportunity you'll encounter, whether it's funding, customers, or guidance, will likely come through a connection you've made. This isn't about shallow, transactional networking, but about building genuine, meaningful relationships that last. Building a successful business isn't just about what you know, it's also about who you know and how well you cultivate and leverage those relationships. But how do you build these connections in a way that feels authentic and sustainable? The three types of relationships you need. To create lasting wealth through entrepreneurship, you need to build relationships at three levels. 1. Mentors and advisors. Two peers and collaborators. 3. Clients and customers. Let's break these down. 1. Mentors and advisors. Learning from those who've been there. Mentors and advisors are critical to your success because they offer a wealth of knowledge, experience, and insight that you haven't yet acquired. They've been where you want to go, and they can help you avoid pitfalls, take advantage of opportunities, and guide you toward success. Seek out individuals in your industry or related fields who have achieved the level of success you aspire to. Build relationships with them by asking for advice, offering to help them in some way, or simply learning from their experiences. Don't be afraid to ask for guidance. Many successful entrepreneurs are willing to mentor others because they remember the challenges of building their own businesses. When you approach them with humility and a willingness to learn, you'll often find they are more than happy to help. 2. Peers and Collaborators Growing together, entrepreneurship can be a lonely journey, but it doesn't have to be. Building relationships with peers, other entrepreneurs who are on a similar journey, can provide you with support, encouragement, and opportunities for collaboration. Collaboration, in particular, is a powerful way to accelerate your business growth. 
by partnering with others who have complementary skills or resources, you can achieve more together than you would alone. To find the right peers and collaborators, look within your industry, but also outside of it. Some of the most innovative partnerships come from collaborating with people in different fields who bring new perspectives to the table. 3. Clients and Customers Serving and Building Loyalty Your clients and customers are more than just revenue generators, they are the lifeblood of your business. Building strong, genuine relationships with your customers will lead to loyalty, repeat business, and referrals. Create a system for regularly engaging with your customers. Whether it's through personalized emails, social media engagement, or regular check-ins, make an effort to build a community around your business. Treat every interaction as an opportunity to strengthen your relationship with them. When you genuinely serve your customers, rather than just trying to sell to them, you create long-term relationships that lead to loyalty and sustained growth. This is where the blend of business and relationship building becomes transformative. Building a network isn't about going to events and handing out business cards. It's about building real, authentic relationships. People can sense when you're genuine, and they're much more likely to connect with you if they feel you're being real with them. Here are three principles to keep in mind when building relationships. 1. Give before you receive. Offer value before asking for something in return. Whether it's advice, a helpful introduction, or simply support, make sure you're contributing to the relationship. 2. Be consistent. Relationships require nurturing. Don't let connections fizzle out, stay in touch, check in, and be present even when you don't need something from the other person. 3. Be genuine. People are drawn to authenticity. Instead of trying to impress others, focus on building relationships based on mutual respect and shared goals. Authentic relationships aren't built on what you can get from someone, but on what you can contribute. When you come from a place of generosity, the relationships you build will be much more valuable and long-lasting. Networking without the networking feel. Many people dread traditional networking because it feels superficial and transactional. The truth is, it doesn't have to be. Instead of thinking about networking as something you do think about it as something you cultivate. Networking can happen anywhere, at conferences, on social media, in online communities, or even in casual settings. The key is to be open to meeting new people and nurturing those relationships over time. Start by attending events whether online or in person that align with your industry or interests. But instead of focusing on how many people you can meet, focus on quality over quantity. Who are the people you feel a genuine connection with? Follow up with them and continue building that relationship. Once you've built strong relationships, the next step is learning how to leverage them for business growth. This doesn't mean using people, it means creating mutually beneficial opportunities where both parties gain value. For example, collaborating with a peer on a joint project that helps both businesses. Seeking advice or mentorship from someone who's already achieved what you're working toward. Asking satisfied customers for referrals or testimonials to help grow your client base. Building and leveraging relationships should feel natural, not forced. If you've taken the time to cultivate genuine connections, the opportunities for collaboration and growth will happen organically. Let's put this into practice. Here's what I want you to do. 1. Make a list of three people in your industry or related industries who you admire and would like to learn from. Reach out to them with a thoughtful message explaining why you value their insight and would love to connect. 2. Find or create a small group of peers who are on a similar journey. This could be a mastermind group, a local entrepreneurial meetup, or an online community. Commit to meeting regularly to share ideas and support each other. 3. Pick three existing clients or customers and find a way to deepen your relationship with them. This could be through a personalized email, offering additional value, or simply checking in with them to show you care about their success. Chapter 5. Marketing and Selling with Confidence Why marketing and selling are essential to wealth creation. You can have the best product or service in the world, but if no one knows about it, your business won't survive. This is why marketing and selling are non-negotiable skills for any successful entrepreneur. They are the lifeblood of your business, and without mastering these two areas, true entrepreneurial wealth will remain out of reach. But here's the good news, marketing and selling don't have to feel overwhelming or manipulative. When done authentically, they can feel empowering and aligned with your values. One of the biggest misconceptions about selling is that it's all about pushing people to buy something they don't need. 
But real selling is about serving. It's about solving a problem, filling a need, and helping your customers get something valuable. When you shift your mindset to see selling as serving, it becomes an act of generosity rather than manipulation. The shift from selling to serving. Let's start by redefining what it means to sell. Many entrepreneurs, especially purpose-driven ones, feel uncomfortable with selling because they see it as a necessary evil. But the truth is, selling is an opportunity to connect with your customers on a deeper level and provide them with something that genuinely helps them. Selling, when approached with authenticity and service, becomes an extension of your passion and purpose. This mindset shift is critical if you want to build a business that feels aligned with your values and creates long-term wealth. Here's a question to reflect on. What problem does your product or service solve, and how does it improve the lives of your customers? When you focus on how your business serves others, selling becomes natural. Step 1. Know your audience. Marketing is only effective when it speaks directly to the right audience. You need to know your audience inside and out, their pain points, desires, and motivations, so you can communicate in a way that resonates with them. To get started, ask yourself these questions. 1. What problem is my target audience trying to solve? 2. What are their biggest frustrations or challenges? 3. What solution are they looking for, and how can I position my product or service to meet that need? Once you understand your audience's needs, you can craft a message that speaks directly to them. One way to do this is by creating a customer avatar, a detailed profile of your ideal customer. Include information about their demographics, interests, pain points, and goals. This will help you tailor your marketing messages to their specific needs. Step 2. Create a marketing strategy that aligns with your values. Many entrepreneurs get caught up in trying to use every marketing tactic under the sun, social media ads, SEO, email marketing, influencer partnerships, the list goes on. But trying to do everything often leads to burnout and ineffective results. Instead, focus on creating a marketing strategy that aligns with your strengths and values. Here's how to do it. 1. Choose the right platforms. Where does your audience spend their time? Focus your marketing efforts on those platforms. For example, if your audience is active on Instagram, prioritize building a presence there rather than spreading yourself too thin across multiple platforms. 2. What type of content feels authentic to you? If you're a great writer, focus on blog posts or email marketing. If you're more comfortable on video, build a YouTube or TikTok presence. Marketing is most effective when it's genuine and reflects who you are as an entrepreneur. 3. Consistency is key. Whatever platforms and content you choose, consistency is what drives results. Create a content calendar to help you stay on track and ensure your message is consistently reaching your audience. Marketing doesn't have to feel like a chore when it's aligned with your strengths and values. When you're sharing content that feels authentic and meaningful, marketing becomes an extension of your passion not just a business task. Step 3. Mastering the Art of Selling Now that you understand how to market your business, let's talk about the next critical skill, selling. If marketing is about attracting people to your business, selling is about turning those leads into paying customers. Selling is often the area that makes entrepreneurs the most uncomfortable. But here's the key. Selling isn't about convincing people to buy something. It's about helping them make the right decision. When you truly believe in the value of what you're offering, you'll sell with confidence. Let's break down the selling process into simple, actionable steps. 1. Build trust. People buy from those they trust. Focus on building a relationship with your audience before you try to sell. This can be done through regular engagement, providing valuable content, and being transparent in your communication. 2. Identify their pain points. During the sales conversation, Ask questions that help you understand your customer's biggest challenges. The more you understand their needs, the better you can position your product as the solution. 3. Highlight the value, not just the features. When talking about your product or service, focus on the benefits and results, not just the features. For example, if you're selling a course on business coaching, don't just talk about the modules. Talk about the transformation your clients will experience after completing the course. 4. Handle objections with empathy. Many entrepreneurs shy away from handling objections because they see it as a confrontation. But objections are actually opportunities to address concerns and provide clarity. Approach objections with empathy and curiosity, 
ask questions to understand where the concern is coming from, and provide thoughtful answers. When you approach selling from a place of empathy and service, you'll naturally build stronger relationships with your customers, and the sales process will feel much less intimidating. Remember, you're not just selling a product, you're providing a solution to someone's problem. Overcoming the fear of rejection. One of the biggest fears entrepreneurs face in selling is the fear of rejection. No one likes to hear no, but the truth is, every successful entrepreneur has faced rejection, and it's an inevitable part of the journey. Rejection is not a reflection of your worth or your product's value. It simply means that the offer wasn't the right fit for that particular person at that moment. When you detach emotionally from the outcome and focus on serving, rejection becomes less personal and more of a learning opportunity. How to handle rejection 1. Don't take it personally. Understand that rejection isn't a personal failure. Sometimes it's about timing, budget, or circumstances beyond your control. 2. Ask for feedback. If someone declines your offer, politely ask if they'd be willing to share why. This feedback can help you improve your sales process and better understand your audience's needs. 3. Keep going. Remember, rejection is a natural part of entrepreneurship. The more no's you hear, the closer you are to a yes. Persistence is key to long-term success. Let's put these marketing and sales strategies into action. 1. Create your customer avatar. Write down the key characteristics of your ideal customer. Include their pain points, desires, and where they spend their time online. 2. Design your marketing strategy. Identify two or three platforms where your audience is most active and commit to creating consistent content that reflects your brand and strengths. 3. Practice selling. Identify three potential customers and practice your sales pitch with them. Focus on understanding their pain points, highlighting the benefits of your product, and addressing any objections with empathy. Chapter 6. Scaling for Sustainable Success. The Difference Between Growth and Scaling. Many entrepreneurs dream of growing their businesses, but growth and scaling are not the same thing. Growth often means increasing revenue, but it also usually comes with an increase in resources, time, and effort. This can quickly lead to burnout if not managed properly. Scaling, on the other hand, is about increasing revenue while minimizing the increase in costs and time commitments. It's about doing more with less, creating a business that works for you, not one that takes over your life. Many entrepreneurs believe they need to hustle harder to grow, but true entrepreneurial wealth comes from working smarter, not harder. The goal is to create systems and leverage resources that allow your business to expand without draining you. Step 1. Build systems that work without you. The first step to scaling sustainably is to build systems that can run without your constant involvement. Think of systems as the backbone of your business. They keep things running smoothly, even when you're not actively involved in every task. Here's a simple way to start systematizing your business. 1. Identify repetitive tasks. Look at your daily and weekly tasks. What do you find yourself doing repeatedly? These are tasks that can be systematized or delegated. 2. Create standard operating procedures SOPs. Once you've identified repetitive tasks, create detailed instruction SOPs for how each task should be done. This allows you to delegate the task to someone else or automate it using technology. 3. Automate where possible. Use software and tools to automate tasks like scheduling, invoicing, email marketing, and customer service. Automation saves time and reduces human error. By building systems, you create consistency in your business, which allows it to scale without relying on your constant attention. When you set up systems, you're freeing yourself to focus on growth, innovation, and high-level decision-making. Step 2. Delegate and empower your team. The next key to scaling is learning how to delegate. Many entrepreneurs struggle with this because they feel no one can do the work as well as they can. But trying to do everything yourself is a recipe for burnout, and it limits the potential of your business. Letting go of control can be hard, but it's essential to scale. Delegation isn't about relinquishing responsibility, it's about empowering others to take ownership of tasks so you can focus on the big picture. How to delegate effectively. 1. Hire the right people. When scaling, you don't just need bodies to fill roles, you need people who are aligned with your vision and values. Hire individuals who are not only skilled but also passionate about the mission of your business. 2. Provide clear expectations. When delegating, it's crucial to provide clear instructions and expectations. 
the more specific you are about the desired outcome, the more empowered your team will feel to deliver. 3. Trust and empower your team. Delegation works best when you trust your team to do the job. This means giving them the freedom to make decisions within their scope of work. Micromanaging defeats the purpose of delegation. Building a strong team allows you to scale your business by multiplying your efforts. With the right people in place, your business can grow without requiring you to handle every detail. Step 3. Leverage technology and tools. Technology is one of the most powerful tools you can use to scale your business efficiently. By leveraging the right tools, you can automate processes, streamline communication, and reduce time spent on administrative tasks. Here are a few areas where technology can help you scale. 1. Automation tools. Automate routine tasks like scheduling, invoicing, and social media posting using tools like Zapier, Hootsuite, or Calendly. 2. Customer Relationship Management CRM. Use a CRM system to keep track of customer interactions, sales leads, and follow-ups. This allows you to manage relationships at scale and ensure nothing falls through the cracks. 3. Project Management Software. Tools like Asana, Trello, or Monday.com help you manage your team's tasks, track project progress, and ensure everyone is on the same page.